Welcome to another episode of the For the Good podcast. I'm Michelle. If you're new here, thanks so much for watching on YouTube or listening on a podcast streaming service. Today, we have a very special guest. You want to introduce yourself? I'm Kaylee. This is a really good friend of mine. We actually grew up next door neighbors, and there's no other person that I'd rather have on the first guest episode other than you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Very excited. Of course. Okay. So today's topic is very special um, because it just goes to show how important it is to have good Christian friends in your life. So if you watched the first episode that I filmed um, when I did a Q&A, which I will insert the clip. Do you think it's possible to lose your salvation? Um, yes. And unfortunately, a lot of people have, especially if you are surrounded by worldly things. I was asked a question on my Instagram and someone said, do you think you can lose your salvation? And I answered yes, because of my story. Kaylee watched it after it was over, got a lot of courage to call me and call me out like a good Christian friend should have. We had a really good conversation that night that she called me. We are just going to clear the air on my answer. (laughs) So, well, I'll go ahead and ask you the same question that I got asked. So, do you think that you can lose your salvation? Uh, Me personally, no. I was raised that once saved, always saved, that on the cross it was finished, everything was taken care of from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter what we do, if we truly believe in Jesus Christ and repent from our sins, turn away, and start living a life for Him, to glorify and honor Him, that nothing we can do can pluck us out of His hands. And there's some verses that I kind of gave you Mm -hmm. just to show that. Um, I know especially for me, different topics and stuff that can be confusing or just hard to understand. I always go to my pastor, his wife, uh, my grandparents, and just ask for verses straight from God's word that can help explain those. Especially, I read out of the King James Version, so old school, Mm -hmm. a uh, a lot of words that can kind of be hard to understand. Just getting verses straight from God's word that really help back up principles that I was raised on. I know me personally, I grew up going to church, and so I feel like a lot of times when that is the case, you're growing up and you're being taught these things and told these things, and being so young, sometimes you don't always refer back to scripture to back those things up. So especially the past year, I've really dove into proving the things that I believe, like for myself, reading through scripture um, and backing those things up myself because Like when that person asked you that question through Instagram and you answered based upon how you were raised and what what you believed, um, that's how you answered. So if I were ever in that case and got asked that question, I would want to be able to back up why I believe what I believe through scripture and not just through my own words. Mm -hmm. And Um, experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I felt uh, a really strong conviction. Like you said, it took a lot of courage for me to do that. I was very nervous. I didn't want to in any way hurt your feelings Mm -hmm. or try to just 100% say, well, you're wrong kind of thing. I just wanted to be able to show you why I believe once saved, always saved Mm -hmm. and show you verses through scripture that can help prove that. Yeah, yeah. And it came from a place of love. And I think that's another thing that's really important when you're talking to a friend and just like coming from a good place like hey this is what god's word says i know that like you said it came from my beliefs and my journey which is why i answered the way that i did but just being able to like get up courage and i could just tell that you were nervous when you first (laughs) called me you're like i just want to talk to you about something that you said and i was like yeah what's up and then i Personally, I don't think I reacted bad. I was just like, thank you so much for calling me out. Like I was in that moment. There was no, there was no feeling other than like just being so thankful that you're a friend in my life and that you were able to correct me. So we'll dive into some verses and explanations on 
why once you're saved, you're always saved. And then I can go into a little bit of detail of why I thought that originally. So we'll just start with why I thought that. <laughs> I, feel <laughs> I feel like that'd be a good, just to go ahead and do that. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just, this is why I thought it. Yeah. So, and this is another thing that you said that you, your pastor did a message on, which was what's the difference between your testimony and actually receiving salvation. Because when I explained it to you as to why I answered that way, you said, that's your testimony. Yeah. So this was also something that I was fighting with in myself because I'm like, well, was I saved when I was younger? You know, like, and that's something that I took to the Lord. And my answer after just sitting on it for a while was no. I thought I was. It was just like, I was involved in church and... I vividly remember um, I went to a Christian music festival and they did a call and they were like, if you want to give your life to Christ today, like come to this cross. I went to the cross and I said it, you know, like I said all the things, but I don't think I truly believed it in my heart and that your heart posture and like actually believing it is like the biggest thing. Missing that and then like going through my life, I always believed in God, but it wasn't a truly like deep rooted faith to the point where like I felt like I gave my life to Christ Mm -hmm. up until a year and a half ago. And then I had a really deep encounter with him and I was like, this is it alone in my bedroom. And then two months later I got baptized. So I answered that because I thought that I was saved and I thought that I reverted back into the world and started chasing worldly things again. (laughs) My dog just (laughs) stepped on the sound bar. I'm leaving that in. That was so funny. (laughs) The reason why I thought that I lost my salvation was because I thought I was initially saved and that I went back into the world, which... People do, but yeah, once the lovely, they come back... The lovely backsliding. I feel like everyone knows about that. Backsliding. Um, backsliding, yeah. Yeah. I'm guilty of it. Yeah. So, like, yeah. going to the Lord and then, like... And then hesitating, getting mm-hmm. a little nervous. Mm-hmm. Not nervous, but just not fully committing your life to the Lord mm-hmm. like like we should. Living half in the world, half, half yeah. in Christianity. Being lukewarm. Yeah. 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 Lukewarm Christian. <sighs> Boy, is that a hot topic? <laughs> I feel like that's another another episode you could oh, do. Oh, it is. It's on yeah, the list. Yeah, that's a yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, but going back to that, the backsliding. No matter how how much you backslide, God's always in your heart. Once you're saved, you'll make your way back to Him. But that was the hardest part for me was like wrapping my head around the fact that like I wasn't saved, thinking I was saved not truly believing it, thinking I believed it. My personality is like, I like to be in control. Putting control in God was very hard for me. So it was really hard for me to like actually fully sit down and be like, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. So that's why I answered that is because I thought that I was saved and then I went back into the world and that Jesus didn't love me anymore. But I was wrong and I was never actually saved. And now I have my salvation. And even if I backslide, Jesus still loves me. Yeah, he's so. faithful. So Titus one sixteen kind of touches on claiming that you have a relationship with Christ, but not living your life like you do. So I feel like that's a lot of Christians nowadays. They claim to be a Christian. Like same experience as you. I went to church camp growing up. It It's a, it's a lot at once kind of thing. I don't want to say that all camps do this. And by no means am I saying it's their goal. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they put a lot of, if you don't leave camp Mm. saved, then it's a wasted trip. Mm, Um, I know I went, I think I went to camp two or three years and I went to the same camp and it was a lot. Well, it's almost like forced salvation in a way. Like Um, they like, they put too much pressure and they don't leave it up to you. They don't. Yes. Because God gives us that free will he does not force a relationship with him because if it was forced we wouldn't desire it exactly god desires our hearts and our love he does not force it upon us and we have free will to choose and accept him Mm -hmm. after hearing about him Mm -hmm. so i feel like a lot of times at camp and even where you went to what was it again the christian concert yeah Mm -hmm. um it's kind of forced in a way that everyone else is doing it so you feel almost obligated to Mm -hmm. 
It's and like raising your hands in church. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You cannot get saved out of you feeling obligated to. It has yeah. to be a true desire yeah. for you to pursue Christ and to have a relationship with Him. Mm-hmm. So that's what Titus one uh, one sixteen kind of touches on. It says okay. they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable. So claiming that you're saved, but continuing to follow the world. Mm-hmm. My pastor always describes it as. It's a 180 degree turn. You're heading this way. You're following the world. You're doing everything that everyone else is doing. You're living in sin and you don't find any conviction in it. Mm -hmm. You find Jesus. You realize you're a sinner. You repent from those sins. You truly desire to have a relationship with him and you make a 180 degree turn and you start heading in the opposite direction and following Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you can't be saved and then continue heading in that same direction. Mm -hmm. There has to be a change in your life. And that's Mm -hmm. not to say you're going to sin. Everyone's a sinner. You're born a sinner. Being saved and Jesus saving us from those sins does not mean that we're never going to sin again. Jesus was the only one that never sinned here on earth. Mm -hmm. Made perfect, never sinned. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to be like him, but we never will be because we are human. We have our flesh. We live in this world. Mm-hmm. That's what Titus one sixteen kind of explains is claiming that you have a relationship with Christ, but living in the opposite way. And I'm guilty of that. I think we all are. Yeah. And I think another thing that's important to know is a lot of people will hear the way that Christians live, right? And they're like, I don't understand how you do that. Curse words are just part of my vocabulary. I don't understand how you never curse. Mm-hmm. And this is just a stupid <laughs> example, but like all sin is sin. Exactly. All sin is equal. Yep. I think it's important to note that the closer you get to God and actually having a relationship with him, that change is natural. Yep. It naturally happens. Exactly. So you have the spirit of the living God within you and he works on you every day to get closer to him and to not not sin as much. And yeah. it's up to us whether we truly like desire it and yeah. listen. I forget. I don't remember if it was a study that I was doing or if it's something my pastor said, but it explains as your relationship with Christ grows, your desires become his desires. Mm-hmm. You're beginning to think how God would think. Mm-hmm and beginning to live how Jesus lived when he was here on earth. So like you said, it's a natural thing. If you truly have a relationship with Christ, it's not something that you have to force. For, yeah, it's just something that's going to come naturally. Yeah, and I think this kind of goes like hand in hand with like the works, which I'm I'm coming out of a works-based gospel, which is just I felt for the longest time that I had to literally complete a checklist to be loved by him. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was enough to have a relationship with him when the relationship is way more important than the works. The works come natural. Like I want to naturally desire, which I do now, naturally desire to spend time in his word and spend time alone with him and worshiping him. And it's it's a desire that just naturally comes now. Like I don't have to be like, oh, I better make time for God today because he won't love me if not. Yeah. Like it's a, I need him right now. Exactly. Yep. You made a really good point about this. What's the point in getting saved if you can lose it? Yeah. I don't exactly remember like what I said word for word to you, but I guess that's uh, maybe something that I don't understand about Catholicism, confession mm-hmm. and, and having to confess every single one of your sins and almost like just creating like a rap sheet kind of sinning, yeah, keeping tabs on it. Yeah going and confessing it to a person, Mm -hmm. them telling you to do something, and then you're fine to just do it over again. Mm -hmm. I guess the point in my salvation is once I got saved, my desire was to not do those things anymore Mm -hmm. because through the scripture, it shows you how much it hurts God Mm -hmm. and how much it upsets him. That's something that I never understood about not even just Catholicism, but other religions Mm -hmm. about losing your salvation and getting it back. And I think that was also my main motivating factor, I guess, to talk to you about it Mm -hmm. was because I didn't want anyone to have that mindset of, well, if I can lose it, why would I, why would I try to have it in the first place? Right. Because our main goal as believers and followers of Christ is to share the gospel and to bring others to him. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like that belief of losing your salvation can be a slippery slope that can turn others away from believing in Jesus. Yeah, it's harsh. It sounds harsh, which is why I humbled myself enough to sit down and invite you on and correct Mm -hmm. it because this is just me being genuine. Like that's actually how I felt and Mm -hmm. that's how I answered and the was, importance of Christian friends, let me tell you. <laughs> and as Christians, we grow, we learn. Mm-hmm. We're not perfect, like Mm-mm. like we said earlier. Yeah. Um, something that we're learning. And, but, and this is just part of part of my journey, getting closer to God and and his convictions. So when we first, when I first got here, I was looking over some notes that a mentor in your life gave to you mm-hmm. um, over this topic. And I was reading over them, and then I noticed the comparison of something that he had mentioned to the message that my preacher gave to us on Sunday. And I was like, look at that God a, thing. God is so good. <laughs> He's I call working. It, I call it a God wink. <laughs> That's a good one. I guess the key verse that he talked about on Sunday was Matthew seven twenty three, um, And that says, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So pretty much just saying that they believed that they were doing good for God and earning their salvation by ways of works, but they never truly had a personal relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people do that today. And like you said, that's something that you are getting out of as a Mm -hmm. work-based salvation, Mm -hmm. feeling the need to earn and work for what God did for us. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a logical thought because of the enormous sacrifice that christ made for us it's almost almost, like i owe it to you exactly yeah like i said earlier he desires our hearts Mm -hmm. so on the cross jesus said it is finished he bore all of our sins on the cross um, and he died for our sins so that we could live second peter who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins could live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed So Jesus bearing all of that Mm -hmm. so that we could live a righteous life for him. Mm -hmm. So I guess sometimes it is hard to wrap our minds around that Jesus did it all on the cross. It is finished. He bore all of our sins so that we could live Mm -hmm. um, for him and one day be in heaven with him. Yeah. Um, And I think that's another thing that's like hard for me to wrap my head around like in this world too is like when people do something for me, I feel obligated to do something back. And it's like once you once you love someone like Jesus loves, you do things without expecting things in return. So mm-hmm. I know the people in my life that are doing things for me, it's like they're doing it out of love. And it's not like a, well, now that you did this, now I have to go do this for you. Mm-hmm. It's like back and forth. And that's not the gospel. He, he died on the cross for people who are full of sin and... Mm-hmm. Not perfect and far from it. I like when people compare the gospel to just being a love story Mm -hmm. of God's love towards us. Mm -hmm. This is a really good point too. Ephesians 1, 13 says, when you believed, you were sealed with the spirit. So like the fact that that word is used, sealed, sealed, it's effective, it's eternal. We can't like be taken from him once we fully believe it in our hearts. That's all it takes. It's not an... And that's the good news, Mm -hmm. right? We don't have to go out and like do all of these things and then go to God and be like, okay, well, well, now am I saved now Mm -hmm. that I've done all these things? We believe it in our heart and then we're sealed with the spirit and the spirit Mm -hmm. naturally changes us from the inside out. Something going off the Holy Spirit. I feel like it's something that can be used to prove that people can lose their salvation and what people try to use to prove it. And there's another verse I'll say after that as well. But the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament did come and go. And then after Jesus died on the cross for us, once we got saved, the Holy Spirit was in us. Mm-hmm. It doesn't leave. It's indwelling, meaning that it's always there. It's not something that's coming and going like the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we're living by the new law after Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. And the Holy Spirit, I feel like this was something that I always struggled with, is always questioning if I was saved and come to find out, I think it was 2014, um, is when I got saved. But prior to that, I did believe that I was saved growing up in a church, but like a life change never happened. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is what convicts us. Mm -hmm. It is what shows us when something we have done or something we are doing isn't abiding um, in God's word and doing and living how he did. And I saw something where conviction leads to repentance and repentance leads to the Lord. So Mm -hmm. 
it kind of goes in line. Something that I was kind of confused about was once we are saved, once we repent for our sins, do we have to continue repenting for our sins kind of thing? And as I've done more reading and more messages that I've heard from my pastor is, yes, all your sin already is paid for on the cross, but conviction and repenting to God after salvation is a way of recognizing that sin Mm -hmm. and understanding that the Holy Spirit is in you. Like as soon as you do something Mm -hmm. that you know you shouldn't and asking God to forgive you and to help you to turn away from that and Mm -hmm. to give you strength to give you grace, which he already has. And pray for that. Like, pray for him to give you strength. And I think another thing to note how you're talking about, like, ask for forgiveness and, like, go to God. He already forgives us. Yes. But it's the heart posture of being in prayer and being like, I'm sorry. Side note, (laughs) he cares about us so much that he's not worried about the sin we're committing. He's worried about what the sin is doing to us. Exactly. So it's not like a, oh, I can't believe my child just did this. If you're a parent getting upset, if your kid touches a hot stove, you're not mad at the fact that they just touched the stove. You're upset about the fact that they hurt themselves. Exactly. Like, it's It comes from a place of love. And mm-hmm. once you understand that, that he cares so much, you can't be scared, mm-hmm. you know? Like, first of all, he knows you did it. Exactly. Right? But it's just getting in that heart posture of being like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sin is a, a very, very slippery slope. Yeah. I just did a devotion. I think it was yesterday or the day before. It was out of Psalms. And... It was talking about walking in sin, standing in sin, and sitting in sin. And there's a verse, and I don't know exactly, but it talks about how walking, you're walking in sin, you're walking by it, you're seeing it. If you start standing in sin too long, you're letting it stay in your life, you're letting it surround you, Mm -hmm. and then eventually you're going to be sitting in sin. You're not caring about the sin that's going on around you, you're just letting it take over your life. And that's what God's worried about, because... Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to slip here and there. We're going to sin daily. But God wants us to acknowledge that sin Mm -hmm. and to ask him for the strength to turn away from it and to give us the strength to not commit those sins again. Another thing to know is a lot of people try to say that like God's like pushing you away Mm -hmm. because you keep sinning against him. That's like internally happening. He's not pushing you away Imagine yourself backing up from him. That's what sin does. It's, he's not doing anything. He's not pushing you away. He's trying to love you. And he cares so deeply for you that when you're sinning, you're damaging your relationship with him. You personally are doing it by sinning. He's not pushing you away. Mm-hmm. It's almost like someone's trying to give you a hug and you're like, no, I don't want yeah. anything to do with it. <laughs> like, that's what sin does. It's yeah. like it extends your hands, right? And you're mm-hmm. like pushing the person away from you. And I feel like that just goes to free will. Because if God wanted us to be robots and yeah. to all be perfect little followers of Christ, he would have made us that way. Yeah. But he didn't. He made us to have free will and he wants us to choose to love him. Mm-hmm. He's not going to force you to love him. But he is a God that deserves our love. Yeah. It is something that we should give him. Most definitely. I mean, think of it this way. We're both not married, but (laughs) let's say that we were, right? Mm -hmm. Our husband came to us and was like, hey, you have no choice. I'm your husband. Mm -hmm. You can't can't pick anyone. Mm -hmm. I'm the one for you. (laughs) Although I might think that might be easier. (laughs) (laughs) That would be easier. easier. But at the same time, it's Mm -hmm. like, you wouldn't really have a relationship with him. Yeah. Right? And I feel like it just goes into like, also, if he forced us to love him, then it's kind of, there's no desire there. Mm -hmm. There's just, Mm -hmm. well, this is, this is what I do. Yeah. Like the motions. Mm -hmm. I just wake up, I do this. All right. Any other points? I guess we can just touch on Peter. I feel like he's a good example of how once you're saved, you're always saved. Mm -hmm. So Peter was one of Jesus' 12 disciples, Mm -hmm. declared that Jesus was the Messiah, the true king. Then he goes and he denies Jesus. Mm -hmm. He says he doesn't know him, but he did not lose his salvation. Jesus restored him. Mm -hmm. When he was saved, he already forgave him. There's no evidence that Peter lost his salvation. Um, He recommitted his life to Jesus, Mm -hmm. but through all of that, through him denying Jesus, he never lost his salvation. It puts a lot into perspective Mm because it's like, what's the point of getting salvation if you're going to lose it, Mm -hmm. right? There's no point if if it's possible that we can mess up so much that we lose it. So 
Once you're saved, you're always saved. Another verse that's really good to note, which is something that Mm -hmm. I've been sitting on because it's so relevant to what I'm coming out of. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Mm -hmm. And he did that for a reason, right? Because if, if we could be saved by works, we'd all be running around talking about how good of a Christian we are and what we did that day. And don't get caught up in people doing their routines, right? Like living throughout their day. And if they talk about things like, oh, I did this this morning and I did this this morning. And you're like, wow, I want to do that because... They got saved, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're doing all of these things. It's like, no, they didn't get saved because of that. No. God saved them. Romans 8.35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No one is able to pluck us out of his hand. And mm-hmm. I feel like that is also a, a comfort. Yeah, um, yeah. And I feel like not only does it say no one can pluck us out of his hand, but nothing can. So sin. Um, no the sin enemy. you commit. I wrote down here under just like his faithfulness. No matter what I do, no matter how much I try to turn away and and run in the other direction, he's always right there when I turn back around with open arms. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a comfort knowing that nothing we can do can separate us from him once we accept him mm-hmm. and start following him. So Titus 1, 2 says, And hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So I feel like that right there can just... That's a comfort, for me at least, our God can't lie. Mm -hmm. Something in a devotion that I read, um, in one of the Psalms, David was praising God through things in his life as if they were already done. So things that he was asking God for, he was already praising them as if they were already done. Mm -hmm. So God tells us that if he has promised something to us, it is as good as done. Jesus did the work, and we're saved because we believe. Amen. (laughs) Wrap it up. That's it, right? That's all we need, that one sentence. (laughs) So God tells the truth and he keeps his promises. He's faithful and he can't lie. So once you were saved, you have eternal life. Saved forever. Sealed with the Spirit. Yeah. That's it. So there you have it. This is a perfect example of the importance of Christian community and holding each other accountable and just speaking from your courage to call me and be understanding. So the first thing that she asked me was, can you tell me why you answered this way? Which made me feel comfortable because I was like, oh, you could just tell that it came from a place of love. Mm -hmm. And you were just like, I just, I want to understand you. And Mm -hmm. I want to understand why you felt this way. So for anyone that is feeling like they need to talk to someone about something, God is so good and he's able to use people in our lives so if you are feeling like god is telling you to talk to someone about something be obedient and and just get the courage pray about it and Mm -hmm. and god please help me have this difficult conversation with my friend um Mm -hmm. and just and make sure it comes from a place of love so listen to those convictions i think you said something about obedience and i feel like I think about it all the time. Delayed, Delayed obedience yeah. is still disobedience. Yeah. Not doing something when God tells you to do it is right. being disobedient. Right. Pushing something off. So listening to the convictions of God mm-hmm. and being obedient. And that's what I did. And I feel like if anyone else is in the same boat that I was, mm-hmm. asking them why they, they believe what they believe and they think what they think first rather than throwing a bunch of information at them mm-hmm is vomiting yeah it's more helpful to the both of you because you get to see where they're coming from everyone was raised differently everyone reads scripture differently understands differently prays differently so it can help you to understand why they believe and think what they do and from there you can go off of that and pick out different points and i feel like just listening to that helped me to make the connection from well i think maybe you're thinking of your testimony i looked at it more as losing your testimony rather than losing your salvation Mm -hmm. because that is something that we can lose is your testimony Mm -hmm. every day you're living is your testimony so we want to make sure that our testimonies are honoring and glorifying to god Mm -hmm. obviously like We said earlier, not perfect, going to fail. Yeah. But always making sure our testimony is pointing others to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Always something I pray every morning is let people see Jesus through me, especially at work. Can't go around with my Bible and start start reading scripture to people, Mm -hmm. but I can let them see him through me. Mm -hmm. 
So I feel like that's an important thing. It's so noticeable too. Like the amount of people that I'm sure have have spoken to both of us and just been like, wow. Something different about you. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. If you're feeling that conviction to do it, do it. Like you literally, the night that I posted that episode, you watched it and immediately called me. As soon as I finished it, I felt a conviction. I prayed. I asked God for some some wisdom to give me some verses. Mm -hmm. He put in my mind a a message that my pastor had given a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I listened to the conviction and now here we are. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So there you have it. We all make mistakes and we all we all think differently. Having people around you that are able to help you and guide you and God used you that night. And I'm so thankful for that because it's taught me a huge lesson. So I appreciate you coming on here and, and being willing to sit down and talk about talk about what happened and yeah. be honest. And I was a little nervous, but... <laughs> God gave me the strength. There we go. <laughs> we got through it. Yeah, very thankful I was able to come on and talk about that. Like I said, I feel like it was a big burden. Mm-hmm. I didn't want people to hear that and, like you said, think, well, then what's the point? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just hope that God can use this uh, this podcast to help make heaven crowded. That's the goal. All right. Well, she might be on again because we got some we got some <laughs> other good topics that we like to talk about. So yeah, sometimes we'll sit down and have a conversation where I'm like, dang, I wish, I this, wish this was this recording. recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thanks for being on. Yeah. I appreciate you as a friend and a sister in Christ and having you in my life and, and watching each of us grow individually in our journeys. So that's amazing Great. to watch watch it unfold thank you guys so much for watching or listening on podcast streaming service i will see you guys in the next episode